Hi, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Sydney Coach Replay Show. I'm your host, Corey Camp. It's another week of an awesome episode with one of my favorite coaches. You may remember her from some of our episodes last year. You may know her as the author of our blended professional learning and video course. Honestly, when it comes to anything uh, literacy or technology, she is the person that I shoot a quick vox to. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the work she does here with us at Sydney as a virtual coach and a content writer, Stephanie Affinito is also a literacy teacher educator at the University of Al at Albany and works with instructional coaches to support their practices. She's also also authored a few books, which she didn't mention in her little bio for me here, but mm -hmm. I'll have her talk a little bit about those as well. So welcome, Stephanie. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me and that lovely introduction this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you well, you're welcome. Um, I am really excited about today. We've been talking for you and I have been voxing for a while. It's, it's our main form of communication, um, but about just the different topics that you could come on and talk about. I know you've been doing a lot around virtual coaching lately and um, sketch noting for coaches and of course, tech tools. We had you on um, last year to talk a little bit about some tech tools and had a lot of fun with that. Um, but literacy is at the heart of what you do. And yes. so um, I know there are many teachers and coaches who are supporting teachers wondering how do we, um, you know, get not only our students engaged, that's the big question, no matter what the content area is, mm -hmm. but engaged in reading and how do we um, support their comprehension when they are learning virtually and remotely? So that's right. our topic for today. Um, and and right. Stephanie, I want to hand it over to you to just kind of introduce why this is an important topic for especially right now. Absolutely. Um, so right now, Corey, we are all facing <laughs> new ways of teaching and learning that we have never quite had to face before. Some of us are teaching in a school. Some of us are completely teaching remotely or virtually. And then still some others of us are working in a hybrid model, which is what <laughs> our kids are experiencing in their schools as well. But regardless of the model that we're in, Every single one of us is stretching ourselves to new heights with technology and digital tools, while at the same time trying to preserve what we know matters most for kids and what we know matters most for reading engagement and reading comprehension. And so that's all of our, our topic focus is for today. How do we take what matters most in reading how do we take what matters most about getting kids to connect with books, to think about books, to share their books, and how can we preserve that and even amplify it as we use digital tools and technology online? Yeah, and, and you mentioned reading communities, and I want to talk a little bit about that in addition to comprehension. So really, why is it important for us to focus on a reading, building a reading community and comprehension right now? Yeah, well, I think we've all learned a lesson or two from our own personal quarantine experiences um, about what matters most. Um, I saw a quote not too long ago on social media that said, it was something like when everything, whoops, when everything is uncertain, what matters most becomes clear. And I think that is true in our personal lives. I think it is true in our education lives as well. And when we really strip down all the extra fluff, the shiny tools, the cool new gadgets, really what matters most is connection, it's community, and it's true engagement as students, as teachers and readers. Like, I bet none of us are going to look back in hindsight and say, I wish I assigned just one more worksheet in Google Classroom when we were working virtually, or I wish I just did a couple more comprehension questions, right? We're not going to say that. We're going to look back and say, I wish kids turned to books to help them pass the time. I wish kids turned to books to help them comfort themselves during quarantine, or I wish they turned to books to help them escape their little neck of the woods that we are all kind of stuck and quarantined in. 
So technology and, and tech tools can help you know, spark our reading lives, it can spark our reading engagement, and it can help us authentically boost our comprehension in the process, which is what matters most. Yeah, and I think that's so important because, you know, many, many of us are still, we're all still practicing social distancing. And for some families and, and learners, that's still kind of living the quarantine life a little bit. Um, you know, some of us are branching out and like we started soccer and football here in my family, but it's all socially distanced and we're being very careful. But then we've got a, our neighbor next door, they're still staying away from any kind of group gatherings and um, they've got a newborn. So they're being more conscious of that. Mm -hmm. But in thinking about that, like reading really is you know, for many of us as adults, it's, it's, it can be a coping strategy. It can be where we yes. learn more coping strategies. It can yes. be, it can be that escape. It can be reading for leisure. I know I've dug into that more during quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, you can only watch so much of Netflix before you hit the end of Netflix <laughs> and, and all of the Golden Girls reruns and all of those. <laughs> so uh, I'm almost done with Golden Girls, but it really is. Yeah. I think you're so right. We, it's not going to be that we're thinking about the tools. There might be a little bit of a, I, by the time we finish this, oh, I wish I would have discovered this way of using this tool back when we got started, because then I think that could have been powerful, but it's really going right. to be about being able to that boost that comprehension and yes. um, meet students right where they are, engage them even from afar. So how can tech tools support students reading engagement and comprehension? Well, there are a lot of possibilities, right? There's a lot of tech tools, there's a lot of possibilities, but the ones that can really support reading engagement and comprehension are those tools that help us focus on authentic reading, authentic response, and even authentic writing response to reading. Um, simply converting a, a boring old comprehension worksheet into a digital space doesn't do anything to amplify reading comprehension or do anything to amplify engagement. But if we use tech tools to help kids connect together as readers, to share their thinking while they're reading, to kind of boost their reading engagement, especially when they're learning from home, or to celebrate their reading when they're done, rather than just use the tech tools to hold them accountable to it, that's when I really see technology used in the most powerful ways. We can build reading communities, we can support their thinking while they are reading. And then we can celebrate our reading lives, which hopefully will then lead them to their next book so that it can keep on going. I love that. Yeah. And, and when we think about that's the power of technology, it's why technology even pre-pandemic pre-COVID-19 was, I know back in Texas, we always had the STAR assessment for teachers mm -hmm. and, you know, how are you integrating technology? Um, how are you using technology to amplify, to enhance the learning experience? And for me in my classroom, I turned to tools that allowed students, gave everyone an opportunity to use their voice instead of asking a question and having only one or two students Pick, picking from the hands that are raised to share what they're reading and how they're connecting to the text. I wanted ways for all students to respond. Um, and technology is a really great way to do that. And so we can maximize, I think, through those technology tools where everybody has a space to formulate a response, whether that's a drawing or writing or sharing a picture or creating a video to talk about right. what they're reading. But then they also have more time now because of, of the asynchrony of it to mm -hmm. take, take a little bit more time if they need more time to process or create those responses, but also more time to hear other people instead of only being able to pick one or two to share with the class. They now have access to all of their colleagues in their reading communities responses. So I think it can be really powerful to um, give everyone a voice and let everyone be showcased in that. Right. So I think that authenticity, especially for kids today, for our learners today, the generation that we're working with, I mean, that's where they are. They're, they find authenticity in technology every single yes. day. And so we're meeting them there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we have so many tech tools 
at our fingertips. Um, okay. That's that's kind of the problem, right? It's it's a part of the solution. We need the technology to be able to do this virtual and remote work, but it's a little bit of the problem right now as we're trying to learn how to put all of them, redesign my instruction in an LMS and what an LMS is and all the tools that work with that. So what do we need to think about as educators when we're choosing tech tools for reading comprehension? And my, my daughter's kindergarten teacher had asked me this question earlier this week and I gave you a box about it because she says, I'm getting ready to start my small groups. What do you have for me? What what tools should I know or be using as I'm starting to work with them on comprehension and fluency? So let's stick to comprehension. What how do we go about choosing those? Well, I have a golden rule for choosing technology, no matter what the content, reading fluency, comprehension. If you happen to convince me to do math or another content area, um, my same rule applies to any kind of tech tool. And it, it boils down to four little words, which is privilege pedagogy over technology. Our goals are what matters most, our instructional purpose, what we're hoping to accomplish with students, what we want students to know and be able to do with that technology needs to come first. Then we can really think carefully about what that goal is and then look at the ocean of tech tools and say, Okay, it's not the prettiest one, the most current one, the last one I saw scrolling on social media. It's which one is going to help me do exactly what I want it to do. And if you start there, that definitely cuts through all of the noise of technology, all of the, the sheer amount of possibilities that can then overwhelm and make you just decide not to do it at all. Mm -hmm. because it's overwhelming. And so starting with your goal first, is definitely most important. That limits the tools that would be a good fit for you. But then from that point, I do have a few questions that I like to ask myself um, that are good for comprehension as, as well as others. Um, right now, there are six questions. It's grown over quarantine, so who knows how many questions I'll, I'll keep asking later on. But So that first question is, does the tech tool help meet my instructional goal? So if your goal is reading engagement, does the tool help you focus on engagement? Is it fluency? Is it comprehension? Is it annotation? Does that tool actually do what you're hoping it will do? If it does, great. If not, don't feel you have to use it. You might use it at another time when it's a better fit for what you're hoping to accomplish. If it's something that looked really cool that you want to give a shot. After that, my second question is always, is the tool intuitive and easy to use? Because it might be intuitive and easy to use for me, but what about a five-year-old, mm -hmm. a seven-year-old, or an 11-year-old? Kind of put your, yourself in the shoes of your students and think, does this tool make sense to use? Um, is it something that they could navigate pretty successfully? And then my third rule kind of goes back to our conversation about um, the kindergarten teacher you're talking with is, can that tool be used flexibly? So I'm all about choosing a small set of core tools that can be used in multiple ways before bringing new tools into the classroom. We don't want to overwhelm kids with all of the possibilities, mm -hmm. just want to overwhelm ourselves. So I like to choose tools this is just not cooperating with me today. I like to choose tools that um, I could then use flexibly for another purpose later on. And that's what the tools that we'll talk about today, all of them can be used in multiple ways. Let's see, that was three. My fourth this is a big one. Is it free? Oh, yes. <laughs> I really appreciate when there is a free tool or at least a free version so that I can try it before investing money before bringing it into the classroom and realizing it isn't going to be a good fit for myself or for my students. And then the next question with that is, do my kids need usernames and passwords and accounts? I try to avoid that whenever possible because the act of logging in with a five-year-old, remembering their username and their password can be overwhelming. So can the tools be preloaded? Can they be on the computer? Can they be internet-based where kids can just go to them and get started? Mm -hmm. And then my last one is, are there privacy features 
Like what are, um, what are the features that I can either configure or add on to make sure when my students do respond that it's, it's private and not public unless I'm choosing to share it with parents or the school community. If I can kind of tick through all of those questions, then that's a tool that's worth trying and bringing into the classroom. Yeah, and I want to go back to a few of these these six questions. And, and for our viewers and our listeners, if you're listening on the podcast, um, you can access this list of six guiding questions, as well as those four little words, privilege, um, pedagogy over technology, um, and a few other tips from today's episode, all from the um, Learning Center, Sydney Learning Center, learn.sydney.com. It's the very first course. And it's a completely free course, uh, but you'll be able to access today's and all the other episodes, Coach Replay takeaways. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's important, again, for us to really start with how does it help support my instructional goal? We have to think about our learning outcomes and start there as far as does this make sense? And that's usually the thing that um, is when we're trying to embed technology in our classroom and trying to use more technology, we typically pick the tool that seems the coolest or seems the most fun. And then can I use it tomorrow? Let me see if I can make it work tomorrow. Um, so I love that that's the first question, but the, let's talk about that second one, especially for virtual and remote. So is it intuitive and easy to, to use? Yeah. Definitely for me as a teacher, that's something I need to make sure I think about because I don't have more hours in my day just because I picked a new tech tool. But unlike when I'm in person in the classroom and I can, you know, plan for us to have a little bit of a learning curve as we're logging in and figuring out what to click and where to go. And I can guide my students through that and, and really kind of be that, that tech coach for just a hot second as I bounce from student to student with their, their devices. I don't have that privilege in a virtual world. So the less intuitive and easy to use on the learner side means more emails and phone calls from parents for me, <laughs> right? That is very true. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's even more of an important question that when we're talking about remote and virtual. It doesn't mean that if there is a learning curve, because everything has a learning curve, you shouldn't if it's really going to help you with your instructional goal and if it kind of maybe meets all the rest of the six guiding questions, yes. um, it might just mean that you create a tutorial video for right. your parents um, or, you know, a, or it, hopefully they have their own tutorial videos that you can guide them to. It right. might just be as simple as that. So if parents are getting stuck, you can say, here's, here's the tutorial video um, and kind of, do it that way or walk the students through where they need to click and how to, what right. to look for to make sure it reads the slide for them or whatever it is, give them those tips and tricks in a live zoom session. So when they're working on their own, they don't have as many questions. Right. Um, but I think that's just so important because we're already, if you're teaching online, you um, have felt that rise in your inbox. Um, it seems to never yes. quit from parents and students. And so I do yeah. think that that's a really important one. And then I'm like you, uh, Stephanie, and I have uh, technology tools. I love the ones that I can use in different ways, like a Swiss Army yes. knife. Like I can use it for all the things um, and even yes. things it wasn't intended to be used for, I might be able to use it. That makes it worth the learning curve for me yes. and my students, I think. So, I mean, then we definitely want to think about privacy, especially if we have students creating, um, posting pictures or creating videos. And so is there a way to make that happen? I think I think all these questions are valuable, but I really wanted to hit, hit on a couple of those in our virtual space. Yeah, and I think too, Corey, with the privacy question, um, it's not just private to your classroom or private to your school versus the rest of the world. But also when we think about sharing our reading, we wanna be able to protect the individual students in our classroom as well. We wouldn't want students to orally read out loud to something that the entire class and their parents and grandparents could be able to access. So we'll think about privacy in terms of privacy in the big world, but also kind of moderating what the other kids 
see as well to protect their their reading privacy and their and their identities as readers as well and that comes up in one of our videos later on yeah oh i love that especially you know thinking about our emerging readers or our struggling yes. readers where that stigma really can can be harmful for them if yes. it's you know that's be, that's the scary part about creating video and and practicing skills on video. So that, I think that's a really great point. So you've mentioned a couple of times of some more tech tools and the videos. So um, as we wrap up our episode today, this is a special episode. This is kind of like a kickoff episode. So I know, tell, I'm so excited. I know, I am too. It's the first time we've done this for the Coach Report Show. So tell everyone, Stephanie, um, what they can expect around this topic of building reading comprehension and supporting engaging our learners virtually and remotely in reading, what can they expect after this episode? Okay, so it's a little bit different than in the past. I think if anyone has watched our tech sessions, we could talk forever about yeah. tools, right? Back and back and forth. And then we end up with these really big, long replay, replay shows. And so we wanted to be able to share some of Kind of the top tech tools that we've seen work in our own practices um, but without making the episode overly lengthy and overwhelming to give a try so what we're doing which is what i'm so excited about i've had so much fun making these this week is um, we've created five miniature i guess five miniature follow-up videos that give you one very concrete idea and tech tool to try based on what we know matters most in reading, so keeping it authentic, keeping it focused on reading engagement and reading comprehension in a very real, authentic way. And so these, these five videos will be kind of slowly released next week so that you can watch one in under five minutes, think about if it would be a good fit for you and what you're hoping to accomplish with your students, and then give it, <laughs> and then give it a try. So, we have five planned. Can I tell them a little bit about the, the five? Yes, absolutely. And before you do, though, I just want to remind if you like, follow, or subscribe to the Sydney app on any of the social media platforms, um, you're going to be able to access these videos. If you're a podcast listener, um, you're going to want to head over to find Sydney on your favorite social media platform or head to us on YouTube, and you can access those all next week. But if you subscribe to us or follow us, you'll get a notification every time we release one of those each day of the week next week. So yeah, tell them a little bit more about the specific okay. ones. Okay, so um, I'm not sure of the order. So these may or may not be in the order that they are released, but the first one is how to build an authentic reading community using Padlet, which is one of my favorite tools. Padlet, um, yeah, has a free version. You certainly can pay for the upgrades, but everyone gets three free Padlets. And so one way that I want to show you how to boost reading engagement is by asking your students to celebrate their reading shelfies, which is a selfie with the book that they have just finished reading in the picture so that they can easily celebrate the books that they're reading from home or a blend of home and school or completely from quarantine with others. It gives a more authentic twist to the dreaded accountability reading log. And this celebrates them and lets students see what their classmates are reading and hopefully gives them an idea for what they might want to read next. So that one is on reading engagement. The next three, actually probably all four, are focused more on reading comprehension. And so I'll share in one video how to use a pretty popular and favorite tool, Flipgrid, how to use that to help students share their thinking about the books they're reading. Um, then I'll go to one of my favorites, which is Mentimeter, which isn't as popular as Flipgrid, but should be. So hopefully you'll tune in to Mentimeter, where you can help your students create an interactive word cloud based on anything. The themes of the book, the characters of the book, the feelings they're experiencing, and really build an interactive word cloud together, whether in person or remote or virtual, um, to think more deeply about the topics that they're reading about. Um, let's see, number four is using Google Drawings to create book talks, which is a really fun way to go multimodal and get rid of the, kind of the boring book report and instead move to a, a drawing 
that showcases images, text, pictures, font, colors to match the mood and theme of the book, ideally to showcase the book and maybe even convince the next reader to read it while at the same time requiring students to model and really think through their comprehension. And then the last one, I think I said Menti was my favorite, but it, it may be this one um, instead, um, which is how to harness the power of emojis and emoticons to help students track their thinking while reading using a very simplistic, easy to create chart in Google Docs where students insert their emojis as they read to help them engage and interact with the text and therefore boost their comprehension. So we've got five really great but small bite size ideas that you could try. And in each video, I, I talk about the tool. I quickly showcase what it would look like completed. And then I walk you step by step through how to create it. And then I end with a slide that has a camera on the top where you can literally take a picture of the screen and it'll give you the step by step so that you could go back and literally try it that day in your classroom. I think I'm more, this is like the most exciting thing we've done together on SIPP. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. I'm so excited. I've got to preview all of the videos and they are so great. I've been like, it's been really hard for me not to like tell other people about yeah. them because they're not released yet. I did right. share the shelfie idea with my kindergartner's teacher. It was on the screen when we were Zooming the other day and she's like, what is that? And I was like, okay, let me tell you. Um, I love this. And, and what I had to say is, you know, I, I taught reading whenever I was in the classroom at, at the middle school level, and I used some of these tools even back then, um, mm -hmm. and I continue to use some of these, but I love some of the fresh ideas that you bring to some of these tools. And so um, even if you use Padlet or you've used Mentimeter or any of the other tools that uh, Stephanie just talked about, I, I encourage you to tune in for that quick five-minute video see if there might be a way that it could either show you to use it in a different way or springboard for you and another idea. So right. um, I'm excited. They'll be available. We'll release one each day uh, next week on all of our social media platforms. And of course, you can always go back and watch them if you miss the, the premiere of them. But um, yeah, tune in all next week for that. It's going to be pretty exciting. <laughs> Well, Stephanie, it's always a pleasure. You're right. You and I could chat about technology and education all day long. So I <laughs> love having you come on and share some of those tech tools with us. Thanks again for joining us today. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Cora. I look forward to the next time we do something like this. Yeah, absolutely. I know it'll be sometime soon. All right, audience. Well, again, tune in next week for another episode of the Sydney Coach Replay Show. We've always got a fresh one for you each week. We're doing a lot of focusing on our teachers who are working in uh, the virtual settings, whether you're doing hybrid or purely remote, or you're just building your toolbox because you're in person now, but who knows what cold and flu season will bring as we move into the future. Hopefully we can all get back in person soon, but we are here to help you in the meantime. So uh, again, I'm Corey with the Coach Replay Show. Like, follow, subscribe to us on your favorite platform for all the updates. See you all next week. Bye everyone.